Happy Thursday, everybody. It's the best day of the week because it's time for another edition of Steve's Dangits, where we take a look at the biggest dangits from around the NHL over the past week. We've been doing Steve's Dangits for several years, but this year the theme is what can we do to get demonetized this time? This all started with Brendan Lemieux biting Brady Kachuk, sorry, eating, on account of he bit him more than once. Because if you'll remember, one bite is biting, two bites is eating. So I have to ask producer Drew, is Ryan Hartman flipping off Evander Kane in the video? It is not. It is not. Why not? Oh, because you can't show that! If they had simply stuck to beating the crap out of each other, everything would have been fine, but instead he th showed a nasty gesture with his finger. All right, well, here's what else we got. First, we have Esselindel scoring against his own team. For a thousand NHL games. Kane with a steal, here's a two-on-one the other way, Kurashev has Taves, he tried to pass it to him and it went off of the defender, Lindell sprawled to the deck, Kurashev wanted to pass it and he scores a goal. Well, that's a good sign, it's good for the youngster, he made the right play, he was trying to get it over to Taves who was wide open, would have had a tap in, but it hit the defenseman and in the net it goes and uh, tough luck goal against for Dallas, but the Blackhawks have had an edge in play and have had a good start to this game and they deserve that tying goal. What's needed for Philip Kurashev, who only had two points in his last ten games, but... Ooh, that was bad. Well, let's move on to the second dang it. Esselindel scoring against his own team! Again! Patrick Kane, then Taves ahead. The pass in front, tip the score! Not sure whether Doc got it, might have been a down a stick again, but Doc doing what he should and driving the middle. Well, uh, the Hawks on the power play, able to grab the lead. Well, both goals, Ottinger's uh, anticipating that Puck's going to go wide, and both times he's hung out the drive by his own players. Defenseman, I think both goals have gone in off Lindell. Ottinger vacating the post, anticipating the puck going to his left, and left the gaping hole. Both goals very similar, and the Hawks will take advantage of it. The 2 1 lead, and things not going Dallas's way here in the early going. <clears throat> In case you were wondering, Lindell is spelled with three L's. The first own goal was one L, the second own goal was another L, but, but we're missing one. Does anyone have a spare L? Oh, there it is! Dude. That's a rough night at the office. Two own goals and the kid just, oh dude. Ugh, that's a dang it. That's a couple, da that's three dang it's. That finger gesture is fine. Someone tell Ryan Hartman. Can you, Drew? For our next dang it, Rob Thomas. Very smooth player, and I keep saying one of the more underrated playmakers in the NHL. But the thing with the best playmakers is sometimes they can get a little overzealous about it. Like, it doesn't matter how you get the pass onto your teammate's stick, just make sure it goes onto your teammate's stick. And now Delorier back of the goal. Robert Thomas checks Duhame. Now Thomas, oh, he lost it, and they score! Kaprizov on a giveaway makes it 2-1 Minnesota. Well, quite often in the defensive zone, you know, the outlet play is to, is to bump it. And uh, obviously, in this situation, um, Robert Thomas thinks that he's got a, a defenseman supporting it and, and then moving up the ice, but Obviously, that does not happen, but you can keep your eye on the right-hand side. Robert Thomas does his job there on Duhame, strips the puck right there, and now, oh, you know what it was? Boy, oh boy, Mikula is anticipating the puck going behind the net, and you can see Kaprizov, oh my God, he's one goal away from their franchise mark of tying it, but at this particular point, see Mikula right there? Robert Thomas thinks that he's going to stay right there, and he's going to play it to him as the outlet, Mikkel is trying to play the safe play behind the net. You see what I mean? Now, in fairness, Kirill Kaprizov is a ridiculous player. I, I don't even know if this is Rob Thomas's fault because the puck just finds Kaprizov. Yeah, that might be letting him off a little too easy, though, isn't it? That's a dang it. If Rob Thomas is watching, you don't even have to feel bad because he wasn't the only player in the NHL to just serve up a pizza to the other team this week. Tied game, third period. Here's Brian Dumoulin. He's playing his ninth straight game tonight since his recall from Bridgeport. This is his third season with the Sound Tigers as they score! It's Josh Bailey! 
With Casey DeSmith coming to the top of the crease, Bailey goes into the top of the net. I noticed he paused a little bit there just now when you saw him scored that goal because you know what's coming? You know what's coming? We're hey, singing again. Hey, yeah. Josh Bailey. Ooh, ah, uh, I want to know. Will you score a goal? Let's go back to that face-off. JG Pajot has been a monster in the face-off circle all night long. Wins that draw. Hot rim around the boards. The defenseman, Brian Dumoulin, can't control it. Look at the patience here from Bailey. Get the Smith down. He couldn't have done that more perfectly if he did it on purpose. Brian Dumoulin just trying to fish the puck out of the corner. That's a play he's done a thousand times over his NHL career, and it banks right to Josh Bailey. Right to him. But it's okay, at least it wasn't a road game in Long Island. Uh, oh wait, oh, oh it was? Oh, well, I'm sure the fans were super nice about it. I'm sure it's the last he'll hear of it. Ugh, that's a dang it. For our next dang it, ugh, I'm surprised it only took until the fourth dang it of this video. Even the best, Andre Vasilevsky, can we agree? He is one of the best goaltenders, if not the best goaltender in the NHL. Even the best need to be reminded, if you're a goaltender, tend the goal! Their option when you play for Daryl Sutter. Two minutes to play. This is Tom Wilson all over. Oh. Vasilevsky came out and a tripping call made. Wilson had lost the puck, but the stick of Vasilevsky still tripped him up. Referees are going to talk about well, it, about it, awarded goal, perhaps. That's right. If he threw, if he threw his stick towards the puck carrier while the net is empty, that would be the case. But I felt like it was a poke check, and with the impact of the poke check. The stick ended up coming out of his hands. Let's keep our eye on this. Good soft flipper. And Wilson tries to go to the backhand. You can see Vasilevsky with the outside of the blade. Now the other part of it is it did it get call a tripping call? Yes. And so somebody, one of the top players that were on the ice for the Lightning, have to serve the penalty because it is against the goaltender. And Tom Wilson asked him if it, if it is an automatic goal. It's but you know what I mean. Like, if, 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 for example, Tom Wilson goes wide on him, and clearly the poke check is missed, and Tom Wilson has an empty net, and he intentionally throws his stick towards him, then it's a goal. Why? Man, that's just a bad miscalculation. Tom Wilson would have been sprung on a breakaway for sure, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, it just feels like you'd be better off trying to make the save there. Andre Vasilevsky comes out, way out, to challenge Tom Wilson. Does not do it well, ends up tripping him. Now the Tampa Bay Lightning take a penalty with less than two minutes to go in the third of a game that they're losing by one! That basically ices the comeback. Dude. That's a dang it. For our next dang it, I, I'm sorry. This is both a hat pick and a dang it. Here's the organist in St. Louis playing songs for about two minutes. And if that doesn't sound like a lot, think about how often you hear the organ at a game. Think of any snippet. How long is it? It's probably about 15 seconds. So why did they have to accomplish that feat? Because they had to change the clock from 0.1 seconds left in the second to one second left in the second! They made this poor person tap dance with their hands for two minutes! Just listen, it, it gets worse the longer it goes. Time running down. Kairou gets it again. Shoots it on goal and a save off the arm of Drieger. And he has that puck. Uh, the Blues are doing a great job of changing puck side. We discussed this last power play, how uh, the Kraken just flood the one side on their penalty kill, and they're looking to create numbers on that, John, is they're looking to overload and catch the Blues, bumbling the puck a little bit, and then they try to get going on offense. But the Blues have done a great job of finding the weak side player, and on this one again is Jordan Kyrou that gets a great chance, but the goaltender sitting there, square to the puck, catches it up high and denies the Blues their opportunity with .1 seconds left. And they will check the clock to see if they might add some time. And another Kraken they had three or four great short-handed chances in that first period. I think the Blues have sort of figured out what they're trying to do here, Jamie, in the second period of the power play. Yeah, you live and die by the sword out here sometimes, and I think that's Seattle Kraken. That's kind of their feet, is they go, 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 they get after aggressively, and, you know, if the opponent can't figure it out, that works to their advantage. And we saw that in the first period, they're all over the Blues, and it looks like the Blues couldn't figure out how to get, get past some of their pressure, but now the Blues looks like they went back to the drawing board. Steve Vaughn, I'm sure, had something to do with that. It's a boys. Let's have a look weak side here, because that guy's available. So we gotta move the puck quickly and make sure we find the lanes, and that's what the Blues have been able to do here the last couple power plays. Well, they had an eight-tenth of a second, nine-tenth, so there's a full second left. Who's still a dog today? Thanks for an extra attacker. 
So six men on the ice with one second left. So this has got to be a clean win or a clean shot to the net. Well, the Blues have three left-handed shots lined up there. Robert Thomas is directing traffic, and the purpose of this is, even if he doesn't win it clean to whoever he's targeting, that the puck will head in that direction to one of the left-handed shots, and they'll get an opportunity at it. So I like the strategy. So one second on the clock. Thomas will take it against Morgan Geeky. And a scramble draw won by the Kraken. Just go to the room. Just to, Tyler Toffoli ruined this for everybody. He scored a goal with 0.7 seconds left in overtime, and now every time there's like a second left on the clock, we have to play. Dude, what a waste of everyone's time. That's a dang it. Kudos to the organist. Speaking of underappreciated people who add to the game experience, we've already highlighted an organist. What about an in arena announcer? I don't even think this is the first time we featured H. Wade Minter. He announces many things at the Carolina Hurricanes home games, including penalties. Well, there was a bit of a nasty game between the Carolina Hurricanes and the Anaheim Ducks, and it led to. <laughs> I don't know why this is so funny to me, but here he is announcing penalties for nearly a full minute. Anaheim Ducks penalty on number 15, Ryan Getzlaff. Two minutes for roughing. Also Anaheim Ducks penalty on number 26, Jerry Mayhew. Two minutes for roughing. Also Anaheim Ducks penalty on number 14, Adam Henrique. Two minutes for roughing. Also Carolina Hurricanes penalty on number 24, Seth Jarvis. Two minutes for roughing. Also, Carolina Hurricanes penalty on number 37, Andrei Svechnikov. Two minutes for tripping. Time of all penalties, 14.25 of the second period. Ducks, Getzlaff, Mayhew, and Henrique, two for roughing. Hurricanes, Jarvis, two for roughing. Hurricanes, Svechnikov, two for tripping. 14.25, second period. 49 seconds worth of penalties. That's quite a few. Dude, that's a dang it. I think he should have just pulled out a page of a Harry Potter book and kept going, see if anyone noticed. Now, I'm gonna do something a little unusual for the end of this video. This one is easily the worst dang it. Easily the worst one, but I'm not putting it at the end and you'll see why later. When we talk about the biggest dang it's of the season, potentially of the year for 2022, many months from now, this is gonna be there. This is gonna be one of the worst ones. This is one of the worst dang it's of the year already, I'm calling it, and of the season already, I'm calling it. Connor Sherry, who once played on a line with Sidney Crosby, mind you, scores the easiest goal of his NHL career. See if you can spot the mistake that the Philadelphia Flyers made. Point. Left point pass to Van Riemsdyk, hands one off to Ovechkin. Cycles along the half wall to Kuznetsov. Backhands one all alone in front, Sherry rips it on the backhand and scores! The Flyers with a total defensive breakdown. They lost track of Connor Sherry. He found himself wide open with plenty of time to Deke Martin-Jones and score the fifth Washington goal of the night. Well, this is, this is just poor coverage for the Flyers. Two defensemen for Philadelphia are up by the blue line. Provorov chases. Now watch 47 and white. He chases. You got two defensemen up by the blue line. Nobody covering the front of the net. The Capitals recognize this. Sherry able to outweigh Martin Jones and ah! Martin Jones. Like someone, you got to work on your outdoor voice there, bud. There's a guy in front of the net. I think of everyone on this play, he's the one with the most right to complain. Martin Jones is. Ooh, look at his numbers. Everyone's talking. Save percentage and nobody is talking about how it's because I play behind you! Every aspect of this play is more mystifying than the last. First of all, there is a Philadelphia Flyer right next to Connor Sherry and they just go away. They just decide, I'm not interested in this anymore. Then you realize it's veteran center Kevin Hayes and then you realize, wait a minute, that isn't either of the defensemen, what's going on? If you count the shot at the end, Sherry is allowed to make six moves completely unpestered. I, look, <laughs> producer Drew, can you, can you isolate? Can you get a screenshot? The Flyers are basically in a perfect line. What, who taught you this? 
Nobody! Then why did you do it? Dude, he's like th three feet in front of the blue paint and there isn't a flyer uh, below the face-off dot, below the hash marks. You know, it's interesting. This is the time of the year post-deadline where a lot of the teams that sold at the deadline completely fall into the toilet. That, that hasn't really happened this year. Like, look at the Sabres. They're playing some of their best hockey. Coyotes have, you know, at least shown some fight after a brutal start to the season. The Montreal Canadiens are taking strides. This is shambolic! They lost 9-2! I don't, I don't know what defensive formation that is. Holy cow. That's a dang it. Second last, remember I just complimented the Coyotes? Whoops! Here's Karel Vimelka. If you're a goaltender, tend the goal! Goss to spare and Michelli assist. Nice to see Michelli get on the board. It's been a while for him. No points in his last 12 games. No goals in his last 17. And the Devils come right back as Tatar scores. Well, I apologize, partner. I couldn't stop yapping on that one. And the Devils, good teams respond. Lots of weapons, we talked about it. They just get that puck in deep, and from the sideboards, they throw it at the net, and Tatar all alone. Pamelka can't get back between the pipes in time, and that's a turnover by the Coyotes. Puck management, we talk about it. Okay, I have a theory. Vimelka had the puck behind the net and he was doing totally fine. And he's like, you know what? I'm gonna look for a friendly, I'm gonna look for someone friendly to give it to. And someone on the Devils did a really good impression of one of the Coyotes. And so Vimelka said, there's a friend, here you go, friend. And it was not a friend. And it ended up in the back of his net. That, my friend, is a dang it. And last but not least, along those same lines, very rare, very rare that we feature a video in hat picks or dang it's that is not from the NHL. Although looking at the quality of the hockey in this video, you couldn't tell. I don't know if you follow him on TikTok. A lot of people follow him on TikTok though. Nick the goalie, Nick the goalie underscore one. I kept getting tagged in this video and I didn't know why, so I gave it a watch. I'll give you that opportunity as well. What's that? Uh-huh. My butt sweat. Oh, we are breaking away. that? Are you Wayne Gretzky? Because I'm about to spin around my... Ah! If you are a goaltender, take the goal! But my question is, what's the fun in that? Hey! Hey! I do not sound like that! If you're a goaltender, take the... Oh my god, I do. Yeah, Nick, well, I'm still gonna do it. I do like that he tore down the fourth wall a little bit. Because I watch all these plays, I'm like, why do goalies do this? And then Nick goes, ah, it's because it's fun. You know what? I respect the honesty, but that's dang it. Once again, Nick the goalie underscore one on TikTok. Uh, he doesn't need help with followers though. I do. Please, please, please follow me. I don't know why, but even funnier than the impression is just, I caught it. My question is, what's the fun in that? I caught it. I caught it. Nick, I would buy an I caught it shirt. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. If you're a golden, if you're a golden, should I say it normally? No, it's normal to me.